Amen. Let's give the Lord another hand clap. I just felt today that God has been too good to let it go that we don't give God the praise at such a time as this that we see what's happening on the news each and every day. I just could not let it slip that we praise the Lord in this place. Amen. Um, for our commandments today, it's in Exodus, the 20th chapter. And for the sake of time, we're going to ask this brother to read James, the second chapter, verses 10, 11, and 12. We normally read Exodus, the 20th chapter, verses 1 through 17, Ecclesiastes, the 12th chapter, 13 and 14, Revelations 22, 14 and 15, but we're just going to read James, the second chapter, verse 10, 11, and 12. If you don't mind resting your feet as we do this. Amen. For whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. For he that said, do not commit adultery, said also, do not kill. Now if thou commit no adultery, yet if thou kill, thou art becomest a transgressor of the law. So say ye and so do, as ye that shall be judged by the law of liberty. You may be seated. You may be seated. Um, so glad to be back home. Amen. It would have been a month, and I miss you all. And let me tell you, um, but um, sometimes we, working in the vineyard, we do what we have to do. And I want to say to Elder Scully and Brother Harold, They've been doing some fine teaching, haven't they not? Amen. I want to thank those brothers, Brother Michael and those that have helped in reading. On April the 8th, there was an eclipse. And I could not help but to go on to YouTube watching all of the social media propaganda. Somebody even brought up the fact that we in America and we going someplace because it's been 400 years of bondage. I saw that too. And I could not believe that one was coming back up when we already have been in the 400 years, brothers and sisters. That's already happened. And I looked and somebody said, we're going to get raptured off. And I looked at all of this stuff and me knowing the word of God, not a prophet, but knowing the word of God, I went out on the limb. And I told people, you're not going nowhere. And they were mad. You're not leaving. This ain't 400 years. America, Babylon is not going to fall because a, a whole earth is Babylon. And I ruffled some feathers intentionally. And I said, I'll be right back here on April the 8th in the evening time because you're not going nowhere. And I really saw, after coming back online this week, uh, the phone calls, the emails, that I received in a positive note because people are just tired of people not knowing what's going to happen at the end. 
And I'm not quite for sure if we all understand what's going to happen at the end. But there's always a sense of peace when you do know. Because you're not running out there wondering every time you see a, a blue, a red moon, an eclipse, fish floating in the air, or floating in the a water, dead, washing up on the banks. You're not sitting there wondering, what's all of this? What does this mean? I mean, there's some algae in the water. It happens. Kills the fish. And they float on the water. Don't mean nothing. Because the next big thing to happen, brothers and sisters, you have to read the scriptures. And I could not figure out what would cause a great falling away. I've learned in this era of time, this is what causes a great falling away. When folk keep telling you this is going to happen, that's going to happen, and it don't happen, after a while you just get tired. And you say, see you later. All this, man, y'all don't know what's going on. You told me he was coming in 2019. It's 400 years. And we're supposed to be going and getting our land. One brother said, well, we, we are a year off because if you subtract 1619 from 2019, that's only 399 years. So we got one more year. And I, I had said 2020 is going to come, 2021 is going to come, 2022 is going to come, and until I see that temple being built and the abomination of desolation spoken by Daniel the prophet, I don't want to hear nothing because that's the next big thing to happen, brothers and sisters. And people don't understand. They think that there is going to be this falling away. So I want to use from a uh, subject today the death of Jesus to the kingdom on earth, the kingdom of God on earth. From the death of Jesus to the kingdom of God on earth. Because that's what has to happen. You cannot start off this lesson without going to Matthew, the 24th chapter. Matthew 24. Brother Michael's going to pick it up in verse 1 and 2. 24, verse 1 and 2. Or just keep reading. Go ahead, brother. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple. And his disciples came to him for to show him the building of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. Okay. Keep going. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, and see that ye, see that ye, <clears throat> see that ye, not, see that ye be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Keep reading. For nations shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. That's it. You know, brothers and sisters, uh, I didn't read nothing in here about an eclipse before his coming. I didn't read nothing of any of that stuff. But we did read that there's going to be nation against nation. Kingdom against kingdom, wars, rumors of wars. All these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. The end is not yet. 
Skip down to verse number 15. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand. Uh -huh. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to, his, to take his clothes. And woe to them that are with child and them that give suck at those days. But pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. What's going to happen? For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor, shall, nor ever shall be. Uh -huh. And except those days should be shortened, there should be no flesh saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be short. Now, brothers and sisters, this is going to happen. There's going to be a tribulation. You haven't seen no tribulation yet. Such is a time that has never, ever been seen before. And that tribulation doesn't happen until that temple is built. Keep reading, brother. For there shall rise... <coughs> Oh, I'm sorry, 20, verse 23. 23. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. For there shall rise false Christs and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch, if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. You know why they're going to be able to deceive the elect? Because people are going to fall because they keep thinking that you in 400 years and you're going someplace. And when it don't happen, people are going to get tired and they're going to be looking at something else. Because after you keep telling people that this eclipse and this full red moon and blue moon or whatever you want to call it happens and nothing happens, people are going to get tired. And then all of a sudden, when these false Christs and false prophets come and start showing great signs and wonders, If it were possible, they should deceive the very elect. That's what's going to happen. That's what could happen. And that's going to be a tribulation, brothers and sisters, that you've never seen before. So what do you have to do? What is your job right now? Your job right now is to keep the commandments of God, learn all that you can learn from this book, and be ready at his coming. And in the process of studying, you know that he's not getting ready to come now. But your life could slip away at any given time. At any given time. And it's how you die. Did you die in Christ? Did you die knowing the truth? Oh, you're going to die. If he don't come and you get old enough or it don't even, uh, death don't even have an age on it no more. It used to. You can just be in a mall, minding your business, and a stray bullet can hit you. You can be at a movie theater. So it don't matter today. Death has no age, has no name. It can just happen at any given time. But the question is, am I or was I ready? That's the question. What's going to happen after the tribulation, brother? Skip down to verse 29. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light. And the stars shall fall from the heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then shall appear the son of man and then shall appear the sign of the son of man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn and they shall see the son of man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Now, now that's when we know he's coming. But brothers and sisters, that does not happen until after the tribulation. A time that you have never seen before. Unless you, you have never seen that time. He told us when that time is going to happen. Go back up to verse 15. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place, 
Whoso readeth, let him understand. Verse 21. For then shall be for then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. And at verse 29. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light. And the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. See, and what's going to happen then? And then shall appear the sun, the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Brothers and sisters, that is what is going to happen. And when he does that, when he comes, what's he going to do, brother? In verse 31. And he shall send his angels with great with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. You are not going nowhere. America's not for 400 years. You're not going to be gathered until Christ comes. That's the chronological order of things. So when you walk away here today, you should know the chronological order of things. There's going to be wars, rumors of wars, pestilence, earthquakes in diverse places. All of these things are the beginning of sorrows, but the end is not yet. So don't even worry. Oh, you should worry. You should worry, is my life where it should be? Do I have a circumcised heart? mind. If the Lord says the 14th day of the first month is Passover, am I going to fight that? Am I going to be one that says it don't matter what you eat. You can eat anything. I don't believe the Lord going to put somebody in the lake of fire because what they eat. Those are the things you need to be dealing with. You are your worst enemy. Fighting this word. Fighting this word. So until the abomination of desolation spoken by Daniel happens and that temple built, you need to get yourself together. Don't wait till the last minute. I guarantee you as soon as that temple is built and everybody starts going through the tribulation, the Bible says there's going to be a great, there's going to be a lot of people that's going to be turning to the Lord. You don't want to turn to the Lord in the midst of that tribulation. You know where you want to be at in the midst of that tribulation? In a place called safety. That's a lesson at a different time. That's where you want to be at. But you can't all of a sudden, let me go over here and join Brother Michael and follow him. No, because the scripture says no wayward person going to even get that. Your mind ain't even right to get to that place during the tribulation. Let's go to, uh, did you read verse 21 again? 20, uh, yeah, 21. Immediately after the tribulation, you read that, right? Yes. And you read in verse 30 that the tribes of the earth are going to mourn. Yes. Let's find out why they mourning. Let's go to Revelation, the sixth chapter. Pick it up in verse number 12. I want to know why. What are these people crying about? And when is this? Because somebody says, well, you know, we're in the seventh seal right now. Eclipse. Eclipse is the last seal to be opened. I read some stuff on YouTube. I'm just like flipping. And I'm flipping at how many thousands of views this stuff is getting. Eclipse is it. Seven seal. That would have been okay if they said the six seal. But let's find out what happens when the six seal is open, brother. In verse number 12. And I beheld. When he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and moon the moon became as blood. What happened? And the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, 
even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs when Stop. she uh-huh. when she is shaken of a mighty wind. Uh-huh. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together, and every mountain and, and island were moved out of their places. Stop right there. Put your finger back on. We're going to come back here, Matthew 24. I want to find out when that happens. Read verse 29 again. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken uh-huh. and then shall appear the sign of the son of man in heaven and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn and they shall see the son of man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. This is Jesus talking. This don't happen until after the tribulation. When does the tribulation start? Read verse 15, brother. And the kings of the earth. No, verse 15. Oh, in Matthew. 24 and 15. 15 okay. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand. And then what's going to happen in verse 21 when that happens? For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. And other lessons will show you the tribulation is only three and a half years. And what happens after the tribulation, brother, in verse 29? Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light. And the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. Stop right there. Go over to Revelation 6, chapter, verse 12. I want to see what seal this is. Y'all see why I'm doing that? I'm going back and forth. What seal is this, brother? And I, beh- and I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. And what happened? And the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind. And? And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. Jesus said that the kings of the earth are going to mourn. What does Revelation say in verse number 15? And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every free man hid themselves in the dens in the rocks, and in the rocks of the mountains. What and, did they say? And said to the mountains and the rocks, Fall on us, and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb. Why? For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? You see what I'm saying, brothers and sisters? This is something that they said it was going to happen on April the 8th when the eclipse came. I saw one that says, this is when the two witnesses are going to come. I, I, I'm just telling you the stuff that's out there. Let's go to Isaiah 34. Because when it says the Lord's going to come and the great day of his wrath is going to come, who's going to stand? I, I, I'm going to see what the prophet saying about this because this is in what we call the Old Testament too. Isaiah 34 because I want to know what the Lord is angry about what's he upset about why is he coming back and everybody thinking Jesus is going to come back with a kumbaya party Douglas Miller how many of y'all remember Douglas Miller Douglas Miller was a singer he was a good singer, too. And he wrote a song, When I See Jesus, Amen. When I see the man that died for me. And because people didn't know, they would just fall out. I can't wait till I see Jesus. But when Jesus returns, brothers and sisters, it ain't going to be what you think it's going to be, what they got on the fans. In the churches. 
It's not going to be like the pictures that you see in the Bible where everybody just standing out there. It's not going to be like that, brothers and sisters, when Jesus returns. 34, verse 1. What does it say? Come near, ye nations, to hear, and uh -huh. hearken, ye people. Let the earth hear, and all that is in his, all that is therein, the world, and all things that come forth of it. What's going to happen? For the indignation of the Lord is upon all nations. The indignation of the Lord is going to be on all nations. So when these brothers say, oh, it's going down in America because there's an X. 2017 it went this way and 2014 it's going this way and where it meets at it's over a city called Egypt and that's a Hebrew letter of 400 and it's 400 years and the Lord's going to beat America up. It didn't happen. And it's not going to happen. Because the Lord is not upset with just one nation. He's upset with all the nations of the earth. All the nations of the earth. The indignation of the Lord is upon all nations. What about his fury? And his fury is upon all their armies. Uh -huh. He hath utterly destroyed them. He hath delivered them to the slaughter. Uh -huh. Their slain also shall be cast out, and their stink shall come up out of their carcasses, and the mountains shall be melted with their blood. Uh -huh. And all the hosts of heaven shall be dissolved. And the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll. Listen to this. And all their hosts shall fall down, as the leaf falleth from the from the vine, and as the fig from the tree. This is the, it's giving you the same thing immediately after the tribulation, the stars, the constellation, all of that is gonna happen. Why is it? Read the verse number eight. For it is the day of the Lord's vengeance. And the year of recompenses for the controversy of Zion. That's why the Lord's upset. All of this is because the controversy that's going on in Zion. The Lord is upset with the whole earth. Why is he upset with the whole earth? Because you have taken the scriptures and you flip-flopped it. The Lord says the last day of the week is the Sabbath. But you made it the first day. You don't think the Lord's upset about that? The Lord says, this is what constitutes a marriage. But what did you do? You don't pass laws. You can marry your cat, your dog. You can marry anybody you want to. You don't think the Lord is angry? Oh, no, he's angry. He's, he's angry at the whole earth, brothers and sisters. And this thing is not going to go away. Let's go to Revelations, the 16th chapter. No, this thing is, this thing is not going to just disappear and it's gone. Revelations, the 16th chapter, Brother Mike, pick it up in verse number 12. See, when that seven seal is open and those seven wraths of vows and those seven angels come forth, let me show you what's going to happen. Pick it up in verse number 12. And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. Uh huh. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon, and out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. Uh -huh. for, there are, for they are the spirits of devils, working miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the earth and to the whole world to gather them to the battle of the of that great day of God Almighty. Yeah, they're going to come and they say, we're going we to win this. We're going to beat this. Let's all join together. What does it say, brother? Verse 15. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and see his and they see his shame. And what's the Lord going to do? And he gathered them together into a place called, in the Hebrew tongue, Armageddon. See, this is Armageddon. 
But if you were to watch YouTube, April the 8th was supposed to be in Armageddon, the eclipse. No. When the Lord comes back after the tribulation and the kings of earth are going to mourn, this is the this is the Armageddon that's going to take place. Let's go to the book of Joel. Because Joel, the prophet, talked about the same thing. But people don't read this. And I'm watching and I'm wondering, why aren't people reading the scriptures? Before we post things up. And But it's propaganda. It, it gets your views. And so it's easy for people to do. So... He called it Armageddon, but look at what Joel the prophet said about this day. Pick it up in verse 1 and 2, third chapter, verse 1 and 2. For behold, in those days and in that time, when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem, I will also gather all nations, and I will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat. What's he going to do? And I will plead with them there for, the, for my people, and for my heritage, Israel. What, what did they do, brother? Whom they have scattered among the nations and have parted my land. See, you haven't just only been scattered in America. So when I see this little 2017 and 2014 and this over America and America's in trouble and Babylon, people trying to get out of America, go ahead and get out. You want to leave, you leave. I'm staying right here. Because the earth is whose? And the fullness... And if everybody is trying to get on, to, to, if people are traveling over hard terrain to try to get to where. See you later. But I'm going to stay right here. Not because of anything else, but because I can travel anywhere I want to. If I decide to pick up and go to Africa and live, I'm going to be all right. If I want to go to Europe and live, live I'm going to be all right because the earth is the Lord's. But he says, I'm going to plead for my people and for my heritage, heritage Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and they parted my land. What's, what, what did they do when they scattered? God's people. Verse 3. And they have cast lots for my people. That's what they did, brothers and sisters. Now the Lord said that was going to happen. He told Israel that if you don't obey and keep my commandments in Deuteronomy 28, Leviticus, I'm going to scatter you among all nations of the earth. And the Lord says, I will take your children and sell them and another will sleep with your wife, and ain't nothing you can do. But the Lord has a pattern. In the book of Judges, every time Israel was disobedient, he would send a nation that would come up against Israel. And soon as Israel would cry out and say, Lord, we're sorry, the Lord would deliver them, and then you know what he would do? Whip that nation. Then the children of Israel would do wicked again. The Lord would send another nation to put them in captivity. Right? And as soon as they would cry out and say, Lord, I'm sorry, I'm not going to do it no more. The Lord would send somebody to deliver them. And what would he do? Whip that nation. After a while, if I was a nation, I'd say, no, nope, leave them people alone. Don't even touch them. Because every time a nation whips them and puts them into captivity, the Lord always, as soon as they cry out, bam, whip them for touching the apple of his eye. What did they do, brother, in verse 3? And they have cast lots of my people and have given a, boy for a, given a boy for a harlot. You gave a boy for a prostitute? And sold a girl for wine. 
that they might drink. And so you can get a strong drink you gave a girl for that. So what does the Lord said he's going to do? Yeah, and what have they to do? Skip down to verse number six. Verse six. The children of the children also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem have ye sold unto the Grecians, that they might remove them far from their border. That's what you did. You 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 sold them to the Grecians and you removed them far from the borders. This is Joel talking. In those days when the Lord comes. Keep going. Behold, I will raise them out of the place whither ye have sold them. Uh-huh. And will return your recompense upon your own head. Mm. And I will sell your sons and your daughters into the hand of the children of Judah, and they shall sell them to the Sabians. So, what is he going to say to all of those people in verse number nine? Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles. Prepare yes. war. Wake up the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up. Uh huh. Beat your plowshares into swords uh -huh. and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. So when they say, take your plowshares, all your tools you using for gardening, all your money you using for social services, all your money you giving to nonprofit organizations, beat that into swords. Take that money and and put it over into war. Because y'all gonna y'all better get ready. Take your pruning hooks. You better transfer them into spears. Let the weak say what? I am strong. Y'all better get ready. Because I'm coming. Keep going. Assemble yourselves and come. All ye heathen. And gather yourselves together round about. Thither, th round about. Thither cause thy mighty ones to come down, O Lord. Uh-huh. Let's so skip down to verse number 14. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. There's so many people there in the valley of decision. Why? For the day Why do they call it the valley of the decision? Because the deciding factor is going to be made right there that day. Who's going to rule this earth? In the valley of decisions. Why? For the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. What's going to happen? The right? sun and the moon shall be darkened, and the stars shall withdraw their shining. Y'all see what happens? Keep going. And the Lord also shall roar out of Zion, and utter his voice from Jerusalem, and the heavens and the earth shall shake. But the Lord will be the hope of his people, and the strength of the children of Israel. You see, whenever you read the sun, the moon, the stars, they're going to fall from heaven. Any prophet that talks about that, even when Jesus is only talking about one time, when that's when he returns with his army. And when he returns with his army, he's coming to set up his kingdom. And he's going to whip all the nations of the earth for the controversy that was laid in Zion. Because you scattered his people. You didn't do right. And I'm going to come and I'm going to do some whipping. Let's go see how Zechariah puts it. Zechariah, the 14th chapter. Y'all didn't know this was all in the Bible, did you? <coughs> but it's there. Zechariah, the 14th chapter, bro. Pick it up in verse 1. Zechariah, the 14th chapter, verse 1. When you get it, go ahead and read. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, and thy spoils shall be divided in the midst of thee. Uh -huh. For I will gather all the nations against Jerusalem to battle. Now, the first thing he's going to do when the Lord comes, he's going to gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle. Now, when I look at what's going on in the news right now, a lot of people are upset what's going on in Israel. A lot of people. But this ain't this. This is building up to that. Because a lot of people are upset with what's going on in Israel. And what Israel is doing in Palestine. 
It's so bad that people didn't look at why and what prompt that other issue that led to this. In America, and everybody, they jumped in and they say, we back in Israel. But it's election time. So now they saying, you got to stop. Because they counting how many people out there protesting in humanity and against the other. So they say, wait a minute, uh, you better stop some of this. But it don't matter. All of that is just building up to what's going to happen when the abomination of desolation comes and that temple is built. All of this is just leading up to that, brothers and sisters. And Satan don't want you to understand what's happening, so he'll throw out some eclipse stuff and, and get you all thrown off. And you're not really watching what's really happening and what's leading. But in that day, the Lord is going to do what? Gather what? For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle. Keep going. And the city shall be shaken. It's going to be taken. And the houses rifled. They're going to be rifled. And the women ravished. Uh -huh. And half of the city shall go forth into captivity. Keep going. And the residue of the people shall, be cut, shall not be cut off from the city. All the Lord is doing is grabbing people there so he can come. And he's going to set up his kingdom. Keep going. Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of the battle. Uh-huh. And his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem on the east. And the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof toward the east and toward the west. And there shall be a very great valley. And half of the mountain shall remove toward the north and half of it toward the south. Now listen, when Jesus in the book of Acts, after he had resurrected, Jesus went up. And the angel said, ye men of Galilee, why stand ye here gazing? The same Jesus that you saw go up is going to come right back on this Mount of Olives. And we're reading about it right now. His feet shall stand where in that day? On the Mount of Olives. Which is where? And his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem on the east. And the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof toward the east and toward the west. Uh -huh. And there shall be a very great valley, and half of the mountain shall remove toward the north, and half of it toward the south. And ye, shall, and ye shall flee to the valley of the mountains, for the valley of the mountains shall reach unto Azam. Yea, ye shall flee, like as ye fled from before the earthquake in the days of Uzziah, king of Judah. And the Lord my God shall come. Who's coming and, with it? And all the saints with him. And him. all the saints are going to come with him. How you going to get there? How do all the saints come with him? We're going to read it in a minute. But when all of those people are there, what's it going to do? And skip over to verse number 12. And this shall be the plague wherewith the Lord shall, will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet. And their eyes shall consume away in their holes. And their tongues shall consume away in their mouth. And it shall come to pass in that day that a great tumult from the Lord shall be among them. And they and they shall lay hold every one on the hand of his neighbor, and his hand shall rise up against the hand of his neighbor. Uh -huh. And Judah also shall fight at Jerusalem. And the wealth of all the heathen round about shall be gathered thereof, gold and silver and apparel in great abundance. I want to know who's going to be in charge. Go back to verse number 9. <laughs> And the Lord shall be king over all the earth in that day. Shall there be one Lord and his name one. And his name one, brothers and sisters. And when he's the Lord and his name one, skip down to verse number 16. 
And it shall come to pass that every one that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem shall even go up from year to year to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, and to keep the feast of tabernacles. Let's find out how do the saints come back with him. Let's go to the book of First Thessalonians. I want to know how do the saints come back with him. Because if you look at the eclipse, we're supposed to have been already gone. But no, this is what the Bible says. That's what I want to go back to scriptures. First, First Thessalonians, fourth chapter. First Thessalonians, the fourth chapter. Pick it up in verse number 12, 13, 13. But I would not have you be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep. Why? That you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Now most people stop right there and they say, you see, I told you we die and we go to heaven. Because the Lord's going to bring us with him when he comes. But you're not in heaven yet. All you got to do is keep reading a little bit further. Keep reading, brother. Verse 15. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. Uh -huh. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. That means he's coming down. That's what descend is. He's going to descend. What happens? With the voice of an archangel and with the trump of God. Uh -huh. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Are you sure it says rise? And the dead in in Christ shall rise first. That's when you come back with him, brothers and sisters. You're not dying and going to heaven. When you die, you go back to the grave from whence you came. And you got to stay there in that grave. And if you died in Christ, how do you die in Christ? The man asked Jesus, what must I do to have eternal life? He said, keep the commandments of God. So from this point until you die, if you keep the commandments of God, what's going to happen, brother? Verse 17. Go back and read verse 16. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. And what, what about if we didn't die? Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Uh huh. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. So that's why when you go back to Zechariah, when he says, and the Lord shall descend, and all the saints with him, that's meaning... He's coming. And when he comes, brothers and sisters, let's go to the book of Rebecca. The book of Rebecca. I love when all the prophets talk about this time. <coughs> the second chapter. Yes, I'm fighting some allergies. I don't have cold. Habakkuk. Habakkuk. That's one of those books y'all don't even, even turn to, do you? Anybody know where it's at? Right after Micah. Uh-huh. Nehemiah. I'm looking. Should have had it marked off. There you go. Micah Habakkuk. Nahum Habakkuk. If you were... If you were Zechariah, just go back a few books. Back in the second chapter, pick it up in verse 1 and 2. I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the, upon the, tomer, upon the tower, and I will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. What happened? And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision. Write this vision down. And make it plain upon the tables, uh -huh. upon tables, that he may run that readeth. That's why we read it now, because he told him to write the vision, make it plain. Keep going. 
For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the but that the end it shall speak uh -huh. and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come. Oh, it it's will gonna not come. tarry. It's gonna come. Keep going, brother. Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by faith. Keep going. Yea, also because he transgresseth by wine, he is proud he is a proud man. Neither keepeth at home, who enlargeth his desire as hell, uh -huh. and is, and is as death, and cannot be satisfied, but gathereth unto him all nations, and heapeth up, heapeth unto him all people. Uh -huh. Shall not all the shall not all these take up a parable against him, and again, and a taunting proverb against him, uh -huh. and say, Woe to him, that increases, that increaseth that which is not his. How long, and to how long and to him that lay, that laideth that laideth himself with thick clay. How long is this gonna be? How long is this thing gonna be before all of this stuff takes place? Because it's going to take place, brothers and sisters. It's going to happen. Rest assured. Revelations the 19th chapter. Revelations the 19th chapter. Pick it up in verse number 11. Because Jesus is going to come. How long is it going to be before all of this happen? How long is it going to be before uh, the end is not yet, as the Becca said, but it's going to be for the appointed time? When shall all this be? Revelations, the 19th chapter, pick it up in verse number 11. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True. And in righteousness he does judge and make war. Oh, he's going to make war. What, what what kind of anger does he have, brother? His eyes were as a flame of fire, and his head and on his head were many crowns. And he and he had a name written that no man knew but himself. Uh -huh. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name was called the Word of God. This vesture is dipped in blood. His name is called the Word of God. What about the armies? And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in linen, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. Notice he said armies. When an army comes, brothers and sisters, they're not coming to pass out cake and ice cream. When an army comes, they're coming to do some damage. His army is going to be with him. Keep going. Verse 15. And out of, out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treaded the winepress of the fierceness of the wrath of God, of wrath of Almighty God. And the reason why he's doing this is because in Zechariah, when all those nations come against Israel, he ain't going to let them nations stay there. He's coming to set up his kingdom in Israel, on this earth. So he's got to bring his army to deal with that army. Skip down to verse number 19. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat, upon, sat on the horse and his, his army. And, and against the, his army. And against his army. Yeah. So what are they doing? Because Zachariah, Joel said, come on down here to the valley of decision. 